This is Copilot Pages, a new collaborative experience using Microsoft 365 Copilot that was really the biggest announcement at Microsoft's recent Copilot Wave 2 event. And now that most users with a Microsoft 365 Copilot license will have this capability available to them, let's take a look at what Copilot Pages are, how you use them, how they stack up against the competition, and my thoughts of where this fits in to the development of Copilot. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCourcy. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. If we jump into business chat or biz chat or whatever it's called now since the recent rebrand, essentially the work version of the Copilot chat interface, here I'm in Teams and I make a request to Copilot, you will now see that at the bottom of its response, you get an edit in pages option. Interestingly, right now you can do this from Teams or from Microsoft365.com, the Microsoft 365 portal or the Outlook web app, but you can't do it from the Copilot app you see in the Outlook apps. I'm not sure why there's a difference here, but as of recording this, in my tenant at least, this is the case. Your mileage may vary. And despite apps like Word now having graph grounding in their Copilot panes, you also cannot initiate access to Copilot pages by chatting with Copilot there either. Once you hit that Edit in Pages button, your Copilot chat view will split and the response you have in Copilot will be pushed into the Copilot page that pops up. If the presentation of that Copilot page looks really familiar, it's because what has actually been generated here is a loop page. And as we mouse over it and look at the various insertion and edit options, much of what you're seeing here is exactly the same as you see in loop. Why the button doesn't just say edit in loop? Well, you'd have to ask Microsoft. Whereas loop components we create in apps like Word or Teams are stored as .loop files in OneDrive, the backend arrangements for Copilot Pages are more similar to what we see for the loop app itself. When creating a Copilot page, we create a loop file that is stored in a SharePoint embedded bucket, just as loop workspaces are, rather than creating a file that you can see in OneDrive or SharePoint. This is a good decision on Microsoft's part, and the sooner all loop storage can be pushed in this direction, the better in my opinion. Despite the name Copilot Pages, the special source we're seeing here has far more to do with Loops technology being leveraged to enable collaboration than anything to do with Copilot. I can continue my chat with Copilot and push more content into my Copilot page using the same button. The page works contextually in alignment with an individual Copilot chat rather than an individual Copilot request. But as you can see here, I cannot interact with or control the content of the Copilot page using my Copilot chat interface. Here, it just guesses at what I want and finds a copy of my book who's in the Copilot seat to summarize. There's a link down below to get a copy if you want to read about how to manage AI adoption for small businesses. Here in my Copilot page, I can simply edit the responses in the context of the Copilot or loop page that's been created. The unique feature, at least unique according to Microsoft, is that because of the capabilities of the Copilot page, you can seamlessly share with others. But if I share this with Adele and jump over to Adele's view, you can see that what is shared is just a loop page. That's all that's shared because that's what a Copilot page is. I don't get to see the context of the Copilot chat, I'm just seeing the work product. So I cannot really stand behind Microsoft's telling of this, that Copilot Pages is a, quote, persistent canvas in Copilot chat designed for multiplayer AI collaboration, end quote. It's a loop page in a new interface. If you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd hit the like button and leave a comment to help it get in front of more interested people. Also, if you'd like to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. The baseline idea of being able to push business chat content elsewhere and use it persistently is, in my view, a solid one. In fact, we can jump back to demos Microsoft showed us in March 2023 when Copilot was first announced, highlighting a different, 
but potentially really more useful view of how that interaction between Copilot and the rest of the Microsoft 365 apps would work. In my opinion, building this as a new product called Copilot Pages actually demonstrates a substantially reduced vision on how Copilot should interact across Microsoft 365. One of the problems with this is that if I open this Copilot page in loop via the sharing link, I have full access to use Copilot in the context of that page, as is the case across Loop. I can use Copilot to generate new content, to rewrite, to interact with and ask questions of the content. But in the context of the Copilot page, I can do none of that. I can push content to it from Copilot and then any edits or other interactions I want have to be completely manual. So a Copilot page is actually less an AI powered interface for Loop that the Loop app is. But without Copilot Pages, I can very simply achieve a very similar workflow using Loop, or in fact any of the Microsoft 365 web apps like this. Here I'm using Split View in Microsoft Edge with Copilot's BizChat on the left and Loop on the right. This has the disadvantage of when I want to move content to Loop, I have an extra click as instead of using the Edit in Pages button, I hit Copy and then have to paste the result into Loop but it maintains all of the file links and other references for Copilot, just as it does in a Copilot page. But I have the added benefit of easy access to the contextual Copilot that is part of Loop to work on my selected content with AI. If I wanted to do this with another app like Word, I could do exactly the same thing there too. Now there may be some of you who think I'm being unfair to a brand new aspect of this product. But Copilot Pages wasn't a paragraph at the bottom of some random blog post telling us about iterative Copilot updates. It was literally the headline feature in an announcement broadcast as a special event and introduced by Microsoft's CEO. I don't think this is overall a bad idea, and Loop does make sense, at least as the first place, to deliver this sort of functionality. But for something announced with this level of fanfare, I'm just not sure there's enough there yet. However, I do think the foundation of what we see here in Copilot Pages is exciting. The easy ability to jump from chat-based interaction to productivity apps is, in my view, one of the biggest differentiators Microsoft should be able to deliver in the AI space. I want to be able to seamlessly work with Copilot to interact with my work, whichever app it's in, and however I want. But right now, I'm limited to copiloting in a certain way in the places that Microsoft has decided I should co-pilot. Ultimately, the compelling way to execute this is more like the tidbits that Microsoft showed us back in 2023 that were never delivered to the product than what we see in Copilot pages so far. But as a starting point, this is solid enough. Next, we'll consider where Microsoft might be able to take some inspiration from with this feature. But before that, if you're looking to maximize your return from Microsoft 365 Copilot, you need to focus on adopting it in the right way. I help businesses like yours with their Copilot adoption journey, from advisory help on the selection of the right AI tool, to technical advice with its implementation, to leadership and end user training, and support with extending its capabilities through the Copilot extensibility platform. Whether you are just thinking about which AI solution to choose, or if you're already in the midst of using Copilot, I will help you to maximize your return from your investment in AI. Check out the links down below to get in touch and to start working with me. It might be that Microsoft could take some inspiration from the competition. This is ChatGPT's GPT 4.0 with Canvas interface. And you can see that in many ways, it looks extremely similar to Copilot Pages, but it works substantially differently. I start off by turning a request into a canvas, but then I can modify the content of that canvas either through continuing to chat with ChatGPT or by using ChatGPT contextually in the text itself. Both of these options are open alongside manual edits. Now the purpose of this is different to the stated purpose of Copilot Pages. It's about making it a better experience to collaborate with ChatGPT rather than an experience where you collaborate with AI with others. But the similarities are profound. 
And it works really well considering OpenAI doesn't have all the existing capabilities afforded by investments in platforms like Microsoft 365 that offer these types of tools to hundreds of millions of users. In my view, a combination of the intent of Copilot Pages, the robustness of the Microsoft 365 suite, and the seamless way GPT-40 with Canvas seems to work would offer a perfect AI product for Microsoft 365 users. Chat, on its own, is not the right usage paradigm, but contextual AI in existing apps isn't the right usage paradigm either. We need interfaces that combine these things together in new ways to allow us to maximize the impact of AI's help while also giving us better tools for granular control over its work product. What do you think about Copilot Pages so far? Will you be using it? Or perhaps you've tried GPT-4.0 with Canvas and like it better? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.